Okay, uh, we're here today to talk about um, long life asphalt, a product that uh, Tarmac and Shell have been developing. Uh, I'm Tim Smith, Tarmac's technical manager for the Southeast. I'm Connor Campbell. Uh, I'm in the global technology development team for Shell Construction and Road. Okay, so I suppose the first question is why why has Shell developed the um, age safe binder technology that uh, that Tarmac is going to be using in its long life asphalt? Yeah, we we developed age safe as a um, as another performance innovation. So we've got a long history of developing high performance durable materials, um, and increasingly our R and D and innovation is focusing on the circular economy. Um, the first pillar of which is designing things to last, keeping materials in service for as long as possible. So really, this was an evolution of other technologies that we have developed to try and increase the, the life of a pavement. Um, so already we've got tools today that we can use in terms of PMB, compaction aid, uh, pavement design, which will help prolong the life of, a, of an asphalt pavement. And, and age safe was really born out of how much further can we push that innovation. Um, it started about six years ago when we really put a lot more focus on bitumen aging and the various mechanisms that contribute to a binder aging, oxidizing, becoming brittle and ultimately reaching the end of its life. Um, and understanding those various aging mechanisms was quite insightful to um, really to get a feel for um, how the binder ages, what we could potentially do to arrest or reduce the rate of that aging. Um, and then also looking at how um, relevant the, the lab aging tests were. So one of, the, one of the things that we weren't expecting to find was such a discrepancy between um, the aging we were able to measure in a laboratory age sample of bitumen and asphalt versus a wrap sample from the field. Um, and the conclusion was that the, the amount of oxygen and the brittleness in the, the wrap sample from the field was significantly higher than anything we could achieve in, in the lab. So that led us to the conclusion that if we were able to um, notably make an impact on the rate of aging, uh, of bitumen under laboratory aging conditions, then whatever we do in the field should be um, should be more impressive. Okay, good. So, so I suppose the question is, you know, what is age safe and 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 how does it work? Yeah, so age safe is um, an additive pack that we can add into polymer modified bitumen, which helps to reduce the various. Um, aging mechanisms that cause bitumen to oxidize and become brittle uh, and ultimately fail. So during the development, we needed to use materials which could withstand the um, aggressive nature and high temperatures of storing bitumen and mixing asphalt, and that would also really reduce the, the chemical and the physical aging in the binder. So this was um, an extension of the work we did on um, investigation into binder aging. Uh, and coming up with a, a series of additives that could work in collaboration to reduce the, the level of oxygen uptake, um, bearing in mind those those various aging mechanisms that we'd we'd spoken about earlier. OK, so I, I, I guess the, the big question is, and you talked about laboratory aging there, is, is how do we how do we prove that this works? Um, you know, it'd be nice to have a sort of test that you could put a piece of asphalt in and go, oh yeah, well that will last 12 and a half years and that new piece will last 20 years, but that technology doesn't really exist yet. So how do we how do we go about proving that this 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 works? Yeah, it's a really good question and something that we were mindful of during the development. Um, I've already stated that we don't believe that the standard aging tests are, are giving us a good representation of long term field service. So how can we demonstrate that each sip was having an impact um, without effectively laying um, some asphalt and waiting for 20 years to, to measure the condition? So I, I think there's a, there's a couple of things here. One, we do need field data for sure. Um, the lab data that we 
that we measured was quite impressive. So we were able to detect some quite significant um, reductions in, in aging measured in, in a number of ways, mainly through um, oxygen uptake in the bitumen. Um, and as I've said, accepting and realizing that those aging tests weren't as severe as, as we would see in the field, um, then we would expect that to be um, more pronounced in the field samples. So we, we do need field data to, to back this up, and that's something we're working on now together as well. Um, but we don't want to wait 20 years. So one of the findings was that a, a significant proportion of the aging happens in the early life, so the, the mixing and the, the laying of the asphalt. So already after one to maybe up to five years, we would expect to, to see some significant findings at that point. So our hope is that um, as we get to the, the point in the trials where we're able to recover some samples and test them using the same protocols that we did during the lab aging study, that we see similar or even better effects in terms of reduction in aging, even in the early life of the pavement. So it is still a, a more time consuming um, exercise than some of the other developments we've, we've launched recently. Um, but we don't anticipate that we would need to wait 10, 15, 20 years to decide if this is an effective technology. We're hoping that already after one or two, we've got a fairly good idea of, of the impact. Yeah, I mean, that sounds that sounds good. I know I know we've already laid one trial in the UK um, and you've got a variety of other other full scale trials around the world. Um, and I guess that what we're going to be doing on the M25 will will be able to look at that um, uh, and how well the, the product's performing in a in a really difficult environment with super heavy traffic and all the other other issues. I, and and I suppose one kind of last question is 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 what else is Shell developing at the moment? Is there anything else people might be interested to hear about? Yeah, there's there's a few other things. I think just touching on on your point, it is a really good. Um, example on the M25, I mean, the UK trial was the first one that we did um, together, which is great. Uh, we do have other trials in, in Thailand. We've one planned in China and the Middle East. That's really to assess any potential um, climate effects uh, on the rate of aging. Um, but I think the M25 uh, presents an excellent example to test, uh, you know, a very extreme um, loaded road and also a uh, a section of highway which has good data, a lot of focus. Uh, I think there's a good opportunity to, to really test the, the limits of what AgeSafe can do. Uh, AgeSafe is part of um, a bigger portfolio of offerings that we're looking at in, let's say, the sustainable world. Um, and generally, we are focusing on circular solutions, um, keeping things in service for longer, reusing secondary materials. Um, and we're also looking at the, the bio domain. So we're looking at where we can uh, reduce the, the carbon impact of our products on a cradle to gate basis, as well as um, on the HCF side, looking at the whole life carbon, which is where the biggest benefit is, in my opinion, uh, over the, the carbon that you can um, you can reduce. But it's much harder to, to prove and to measure because you've got a much longer lifespan to play with. OK, that sounds good. Thanks very much, Connor. Very welcome.